Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Once again, Pastor David Trainum coming into your heart, your life, your car, your home, as I always say. Thanking you so much for tuning in. In a few moments, I'm going to be uh, doing a special New Year's 2024 uh, message, really a word of encouragement for you that I hope is going to bring you to a place where you understand what God has for you, but more importantly, and most importantly, that you are going to see that God really has all things under control, and he has called you for such a time as this. As we all know, these are critical and crucial times, and I believe that these are times that we have never experienced. I know we've not experienced them during my lifetime, but by the same token, I do know that God still has all things under control. Now, before I get going, I do want to say this as well. This is the first Monday of the month and Monday of the year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the day that I roll out my teachings. It's been Wednesdays at 8 o'clock a.m. And so what I'm going to start doing is having these teachings on Mondays at 8 o'clock a.m. Okay, my hope is that you would grab hold of some of the concepts that I'm releasing, and these will help you throughout the entire week. Because I really believe that these are teachings that can help you, they'll strengthen you, they'll encourage you, they'll increase your faith, and they will draw you closer to God. And when you're closer to God, you treat others differently, and you also have an assurance in your heart that no matter what you go through, God has it all under control. Okay. And so once again, look for those um, those emails that I send out. They'll be coming out at 7.50 a.m. on um, Mondays instead of Wednesdays. Now, just so you know, you are still able to uh, just click on it anytime after the premiere and you can watch it. So if you forget and you are, you're in a habit of watching them on Wednesdays and you miss the Monday teachings, you can still click it on and you will see that on Wednesday, the teaching will still be there as well as all of the others. I probably got a, maybe a hundred, 150 teachings, you know, in our YouTube page, you can go back, you can get all of these, I believe foundational and word-based teachings that I've done Every since I believe it was 2021. Okay. And so um, so with that said, let's get into today, today's message. It's gonna be maybe a few minutes longer. You know, if our time was if our time was to start right now, we're probably looking at about 20 minutes. Okay. And so as we cross over to this new year, I want to further encourage you in the things that have begun to transpire in your life. Now, often when the new year comes, and, and this is important. People get caught up in the hype of the moment and embrace a direction for their life that God may not have ordained for them. And I'll explain this in a few minutes. Now, my, you know, my hope is that you will be balanced. My hope is that you will be encouraged. And my hope is always that your faith is going to be strengthened. However, when teachings come into your life that's contrary to the foundation of the scriptures that God has, what often happens is it shakes your faith a bit. And when your faith is shaken, you find that you begin to waver a little bit in the promises that God has made. And so what happens is when this new year transpires, and especially in some uh, church services, you know, there is the hype, and I'm going to talk about that. There's the hype, you know, of the new year coming in, and, and they've got cliches about what this year, you know, has. They have rhymes about it, and then they, and then they uh, some, I shouldn't say they, some uh, preachers, some pastors, they're good at, you know, um, a stroking, if you will, your conscience in, in causing you to, quote unquote, give into your new year, give into your new season, bring this first fruit in, bring that in. And, and although they might say, hey, we live according to the New Testament, what we do is we oftentimes go to Old Testament scriptures taken out of context that has really no uh, no uh, pretext to it. And what happens is because you don't have the pretext to what, you're, what they're saying, we take it, we run with it, and now we find that we begin to get a little confused about what God is saying. And so when people embrace a direction for their life that God has not ordained for them, they become unsatisfied with their current state. 
And when you do, you look for a way out of the situation you're in. You know, you don't realize that many times where you're at is a result of decisions you made over the years, good or bad. Now, understand good, bad, let me say indifferent. You know, and what has to happen is we cannot allow a word that comes to get us off track. You see why? Because uh, here we are, where we've been serving God for a number of years, and we are now hearing the word of faith. And what happens is we hear a word and we expect everything to turn around in a moment of time. And although the principles in the word of God are certain, and they're going to produce in our lives. You must not forget that God always has a greater objective in mind when he has blessing you on his heart. And what must be considered is that even if God changed somebody's situation, the mentality and the attitude of their heart often does not change. That's what God is always after. Therefore, it's only a matter of time before these people who found a miracle in what they're doing, and there's nothing wrong with miracles. I believe in them. God is still in the miracle doing business. He's going to continue to do them. But they find themselves after a certain amount of time in the same situation they were in before the miracle happened. Now, for 2024, you must remain focused on the purpose for which God brought you into this earth. You must remain focused on what God said to you in your previous season. And your responsibility is to stay with what God said. Don't allow the turning of a calendar in a prophetic buzzword to displace the promise that you've embraced, no matter how elusive that promise may have appeared to be in the past. You see, because we're believing God for something, we stand in faith and we exercise our patience. What happens oftentimes is that word doesn't come to pass before the new year comes. And because that word didn't come to pass, what we do is we try to find a way to hasten that word. But you got to understand, when it comes to patience in the word of God, there is no clock, there is no calendar, there is no time frame associated with you exercising patience. So the best thing you can do, and this will keep you grounded, is to stay firm on what God has told you. Now, remember, I often say that God's blessings are, in, are transgenerational. And when I use that term, I actually mean that the blessings that God intends for you, and I'm putting it in parentheses, may not manifest in your life. But those blessings may be reserved for your children and your grandchildren, which makes you a forerunner in establishing God's manifested promises for your life in part and for your seed, which is your children and your grandchildren, you know, as they experience them in a greater measure. Now, my encouragement and both caution to you is that you remain focused on what God placed in your heart in your last season. And you continue to, if you would, incubate and water the seed of purpose that you, that you have been placed on this earth to accomplish. You have to have the assurance in your mind that what God has started in your last season of life is going to come to pass. And as a matter of fact, in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, God says that you're to be confident of the very thing that he who has begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And this tells us that what God started, he's going to bring it to pass. Now, the New Living Translation says it this way, and I really love this. As Paul is saying, he says, I'm certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. You see, this does not tell you to seek anything new beyond the revelation of your life that God has already begun. And for years, for some of us, and years, and some of us, for decades, you have methodically pursued God's purpose. And you have come to the cusp of its fulfillment. And then you hear a message that states, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. 
And then the foundation of your life's purpose is disrupted as you try to determine what this new thing is. You forsake and you forget all about the thing that God did in the previous season, which God is ready to manifest in your life. And because you no longer exercise faith for it, that particular promise goes by the wayside. Now, although God is possibly doing something new in your life, it does not mean that the new thing is to replace the season of life that you have been building for years. Don't tear down the foundation that you have in place to build a wall that will not withstand the storms of life that comes. The foundation that you have been building, it's been strong. The foundation that you've been building, it's been built on purpose. The foundation that you've been building, it's been built on faith and patience. And what happens is if we forsake that, we now have to start all over again. In the scripture, as I just quoted out of Isaiah 43, where God said he's going to do a new thing, that scripture is often taken out of context, and it's used to foster a one-size-fits-all spiritual mentality that is not what God intended. He doesn't want you to forget what he started in you, but he wants you to trust that the things that you've been building for your life are going to be fulfilled. Now, in context, if you would, let me just let me just utilize this one scripture here out of Isaiah. In context, according to Jeremiah chapter 29, and if you look at verse 10, the Israelites were held, well, were held captive for 70 years by the Babylonians. God was letting them know that he was going to supernaturally deliver them from their oppressors. And most of us are not in that same state. However, we pursue a new thing as if it will bring you to a place that you don't even know about. And as we prophesy money and we prophesy material increase and we prophesy new relationships and, and marriages and all this other stuff using the, the scripture of God doing a new thing in similar scriptures, the earth is actually spiraling into a true prophetic manifestation of God's end time plan. You see, the events of the earth are coming into greater alignment with what God said is going to happen at the end of the age. And there is nothing that no person can do to stop it. There is no amount of fasting that can stop it. I've said this many times. There's no amount of prayer that can stop it. You can intercede. You can talk in tongues. You can do all of this stuff. But I'm telling you what God said is going to happen. It's going to happen. You cannot stop the Antichrist from manifesting. You cannot stop the wars that's going to happen. You cannot stop the rumors of wars that we're consistently hearing. You're not going to stop the hurricanes and the tornadoes and things like that in mass. And when I say in mass, I'm talking about all over the world. But we just don't know when the things that God said is going to find their culmination in the earth. Now, I've said so many times that God is intent on building the character of Jesus Christ and his people. That has not changed. That will never change. And this character building is a lifelong process. And the purpose of God does not change when we go from 2023 to 2024 to 2025 or 2026 or any other year that God allows us to be graced in this earth with. However, it will serve us all well to keep this as the motivating force in our life, which is God wants his character built in you. That's what we focus on as we move our life into the fulfillment of the promises that God made uh, based on the purpose that God placed us in this earth to do. However, the people of God, and this is who I'm speaking to, the people of God, they're often distracted by a seeming prophetic word, and we begin to place more emphasis on what can make their lives easier rather than on fully pleasing God. You see, sometimes people will prophesy that healing is going to manifest. Deliverance is going to come. Peace is going to be your portion. 
and prosperity is going to come in in an unprecedented manner and measure it. And then they try to get into your pocket. And they say, okay, why don't you give? Because when you give, you receive. No, I've been given throughout the whole year. I've been giving my tithes. I've been giving offerings. I've been doing what God has told me to do. As a matter of fact, I have spent my life in service to God. And you know something? What happens is we neglect to realize that each of these things, the healings, the deliverance, the prosperity, and everything else that we need are already part of our inheritance as a believer. And you are not to be distracted by anyone or anything trying to make you uh, 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 hasten a promise from God. You stay on the potter's wheel. And you let God continue that work that he started in you as he builds greater character in you. And what is often forgotten and even neglected is the fact that seeking the kingdom of God in his righteousness is the precursor to God's blessings. The reason is because when you do, all the things that the Gentiles seek are added unto you. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. This scripture is often too simple for most believers to embrace because what we do is we get saved, we understand that scripture, and then we begin to look for something deep, something that's going to move our emotions, something that's going to quote unquote manifest the promises of God quicker. But you got to understand, I believe and I'm fully convinced that seeking God and seeking his kingdom is a reward in itself because the lessons that you learn as you pursue God and you pursue his kingdom uh, principles of righteousness, you're going to have wisdom that you would never gain any other way. And when lived in agreement with God, the journey is one that brings you the peace that you want, the joy, the hope, the blessings, the healing. In, in, in when we talk about healing, it, it, this is another part. We talk about healing. You know, there's nothing wrong with going to a physician, a doctor. And oftentimes we think that if we go to the doctor, we go to the hospital, you know, that's a lack of faith. No, sometimes not going to the hospital or not going to a doctor is going to cause what's been going on in your physical body to get worse and worse and worse. And therefore, what happens is some people have died prematurely because instead of operating in faith, you're operating in foolishness or presumption. And, and Dr. Frederick Casey Price, years ago, 30, 40 years ago, he wrote a book on faith, foolishness, or presumption. And a lot of times we operate in presumption or foolishness rather than faith. Remember what I said in one of my teachings when I when I spoke on the kingdom of God. You know, we are a three-part being. And we live simultaneously in the natural realm and the spirit realm. And your natural body is associated with the things in this physical realm. And therefore, it's go, there's going to be some different things that's going to affect your physical body. But even though your outer man is perishing, which is your body, your inner man, your spirit is being renewed day by day. And so when you live in agreement with God, seeking his kingdom, it gives you the assurance that no matter what you face, it's not going to destroy you. The journey with God grants peace that passes all understanding. And you find that you have more strength, more courage, and more persistence than you ever imagined that you would have. And when lived in agreement with God, the challenges of life do not seem insurmountable, no matter what year it is or what time of the year. It is. You learn to wait upon the Lord and be of good courage, allowing God to strengthen your heart, allowing God to uh, to uh, to bring a joy because it's the joy of the Lord that becomes your strength. And you learn to wait without doubting that what God said in the last season is going to come to pass. Now, as I close this out. 
from my perspective, 2024, it's a year to continue in the word of Christ, showing that you are his disciple who knows the truth, and that truth will set you free from the bondage of sin, the bondage of sickness, the bondage of poverty, the bondage of man, and even the bondage of religion, which I believe is more deadly than any other vice when it comes to the people of God. It's a, it's a year to be purposeful in your pursuit of God. And when, when we look at, you know, the word of Christ setting you free from all of these things, got to get it. This is why Satan comes as an angel of light. This is why he appears as an angel that is often clothed in religion. Because if something sounds religious, the people of God are more apt to embrace it and risk forsaking the truth of God's word. And when we talk about somebody being religious or not, you know, something when I when I mention that sometimes in the, you know, in the community when I'm talking and things like that, and there's somebody that's really super spiritual, the response oftentimes is, you know, we're not religious. We've got a relationship, but I'm not just speaking of your life from a, re, a, a relational perspective. I'm speaking of your life from having, you know, a, a, a word-based lifestyle. You see, that's different. See, because oftentimes when we embrace a religion, we embrace the quote-unquote, the hierarchy of a certain denomination, a certain person. We follow a certain thing. And I'm telling you, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So there's nothing wrong with having someone as your example. But the key to that scripture is follow me as I follow Christ. And in order to know if somebody is following Christ, you have to know how Christ operates. Now, when we chase after a word, we're looking for a prophetic word. We're looking for something that's going to encourage us. You know, I'm telling you, we cannot do it at the expense of our relationship with Christ. We cannot do it at the expense of doing something that I believe that God has already instilled in us. And that prophetic word cannot motivate you, or I, sh I should say it should not motivate you into paying God for a greater future. And you all know, and I just alluded to this a few moments ago, one of my pet peeves when it comes to you as a child of God, as a sheep of Christ's pasture, you know, the people of God are often manipulated into giving beyond what God established in the scriptures. And I don't care who the preacher is. I don't care the national ministry that he or she may have. I don't care how prominent they are in your local church assembly. The thing is this. God is always more interested in you walking in agreement with the revelation of the scriptures you know that he is trying to get you to give more money to somebody while you continue living a sinful lifestyle. You got to hear that. He's more interested in that. You see, and, and you've got to grab hold of the fact that especially with New Year's messages, some preachers, man, they try to get you to sow into the coming year. Make a commitment. Make a vow. You no, know, if you don't have a thousand dollars today, pay that thousand dollars over the next third, next 30, 60, or 90 days or throughout the year. Make that vow. And then they'll say, make sure they say above and beyond your tithe. And that's as they put more and more of a strain on the people of God. What happens is the devil smiles all the way to the bank. <laughs> Pastor, why are you saying this? Because I don't know about you, and this is for the majority of people. I'm not talking about everybody. There are some people that are that are uh, affluent. They've got more than enough money. They can do whatever they want. And I'm not telling you not to give. I'm simply saying, don't give. 
when you're trying, when you're, when you're being compelled to give. And I'm telling you this because life in this generation is more difficult than any other time. The price of goods have gone up insurmountably. Food on your table, clothes on your back, just to keep your electricity going, just to pay for your rent or your mortgage payments. Everything consistently goes up while the amounts of money that you have coming in gets less and less. And, and what we'll do is we'll say, well, you got to admit God got you through. Yeah, God got me through. God got me through. I, I'm 100% in agreement with it. But sometimes I had to make some sacrifices along the way. That they say, give till it hurts. If it don't move you, it don't move God. Come on. I don't find that in the scriptures. I don't see that. And so my friends, be wise. Build a legacy for your children and your grandchildren. Make certain that you're putting money aside because if you are not there already, becoming a quote unquote, a senior citizen is coming quicker than you think. Let me wrap this up. As I said, I don't care who the preacher is, national or local. God is more interested in you walking in agreement with the revelation of the scriptures you know than he is in getting you to give more money to someone or a ministry, especially with New Year messages. So people try to get you to sow into the coming year. And I understand receiving an offering during those times. And I receive in you giving beyond your tithe, but not to try to get you to do so beyond what you have purposed in your heart. And remember what I said in the beginning, this upcoming year, God wants you to live purposely. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5, it tells you to first give yourself to the Lord. And then secondly, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it settles how you're to give offerings beyond your tithe. As Paul says this in the New King James Version, but I say this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And so let, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now get this, the New Living Translation translates these as, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly, and hear this, or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and he will generously provide all you need. And if you think that wasn't enough, listen to this. The uh, uh, God's word translation says, each of you should give whatever you have decided. You shouldn't be sorry that you gave or feel forced to give. Since God loves a cheerful giver. My friends, for the past 34 years, my wife and I, we preached this gospel. And one of the things that we have purposely done was not put any financial burdens on the people of God that God sent our way. Not one person can say we have pressured them into giving anything. We reveal the principles of God. We let them know that the scripture speaks of tithes and offerings and almsgiving. But we never manipulated anyone. As a matter of fact, we never had a building fundraiser. Because I went outside, I'm not saying that they're wrong, I'm simply saying this, I refuse to put these pressures on the backs of people who were doing everything they could do to pull their life together and put food on their own table. And as I took, you know, I, I put it this way, I didn't want to take, you know, their money for their food and then send them to a food bank as if they're paupers. You see, in our zeal to please God, 
many believers have fallen into a trap of unconsciously trying to pay their way into heaven, pay their way into a blessing, pay their way into a healing, pay their way into a, 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 a greater lifestyle. And I'm telling you, if you want to live, if you want to learn how to live right, all of these teachings I've given you over the last two or three years, they will help you do that if you can apply them to your life. And what you've got to do is keep the main thing, the main thing. And what is that, Pastor? Once again, seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So my friend, for 2024, stay focused on what God placed in your spirit. Don't allow the charisma of an individual or a scripture taken out of context to cause you to lose your focus. This is the time to sharpen your spiritual reserves, live your life on purpose, and not be distracted. So God bless you. With that said, we're going to pick up, we're going to pick up here. Remember, next Monday, 8 o'clock a.m., as I continue in that teaching that I started earlier in 2023, as we talked about the keys to life. I'm not done with that. I've got a few more months to go. I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, racism in the church and different things like that. And then we're going to wind that down. But please understand, you're in my prayers, you're loved, and know that God has greater blessings for your life. God bless you.